I don't know if I should have my glasses on. <laughs> welcome, everyone, and um, welcome, Sam. I'm so thrilled to have you here for our um, little art toolkit demo and sharing some of your, your new projects. Oh, um, it, it's such a pleasure to, to have welcome you here. Welcome, everyone. And, um, oh, I have to. Sam. I am so do you to you oh, hear that? I ha what do I do? I better just close that window. <laughs> oh yeah, I have to close the window. <laughs> okay, sorry oh, about that. Every time we do one of these, we learn. Um, everybody. Yeah, exactly. I can't have it up on. I can't have my safari up. That's so funny. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. Oh, no problem. Um, everybody who's here with us, if you want to drop in the chat um, where you're from, we're really happy to have you here. And uh, Sam, we've known each other, it seems, for years now. I haven't yet had the pleasure to meet you in person. I hope someday we do. Um, I know. You're based, we're on opposite sides of the country. You're in New York. I'm over here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, but Cheryl, And we were just talking about the different our the different uh full you know scenery outside of our windows yeah you are you are in the thick of the urban landscape and i'm here in in small town northwest of uh, port towns in washington and uh yeah sam i just it is such a pleasure to see the work you do your journal explorations your um that you do really documenting these little things that you see in your life well some of them bigger than others um and your, your whole practice of journaling is so inspiring. And I really Thank appreciate you. you taking time to join us today. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm, I, you know, we, we, I, it is funny how long we've known each other and it just feels like you're an old friend and we just haven't, we haven't met. Um, and yeah, it's funny that, that, that some things don't change, but some things have. And some, and the things that really haven't changed with my practice is, really just really focusing on the things that I genuinely see in my world. Not, you know, nothing is, no, nothing is sort of made up or, 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 or searched for with a specific thing in mind. It's really just, you know, keeping my eyes open to the little things that are happening around and, and, and then deciding which of those things I want to draw. And so, um, it's full of challenges. And then, you know, the only, the other things that have changed are, are just my, um, my skill level. Yeah. You know, I'm just, you know, trying to push myself so that the things that I do choose to draw, uh, I, I have a mix of comfort zone and challenge always so that I always feel like I'm growing. So that's something that's been so fun about following your work too, is you, you're always trying to play, play with new materials or new subject matter and, um, and, and make it accessible as well. And I, I have to just give a shout out to your, your um, book, Draw Your Day, that um, must have come out a couple of years ago now and um, has yeah. been such an inspiration for so many people. And that idea of um, to make art doesn't need to be a big, complicated endeavor. And I think that's something that we share with Art Toolkit. I really believe in this idea of art as a tool versus a talent, something you can just go do and, and enjoy the process of it. I mean, the more we do it, the more practice we have. Um, but uh, that accessibility, I, I find is, is um, we, we, we can all make, make time. It doesn't have to be a lot of time, but find that time for art. Yeah, no, totally. And, you know, I never, I never had the um, goal when I started to draw in my journal when my kids were little, I never had the goal to, you know, sell the work to be a fine artist. I'm, I'm, I might try that my hand at that someday, but you know, it, it, I went to a fine art school, but when this practice started, it was just for me and it was just for my family and for me and for me to just have an out, you know, something that was away from screens and, and just, you know, using my brain in a different way and challenging myself and, you know, just going back to childhood because I used to draw just for fun. It wasn't, there was no stigma around it. There was no pressure. There was no comparison really. I mean, I compared always because I grew up in a family of artists. I was always comparing to my sister who was always wildly better than me. <laughs> but, um, you know, I had my own thing and I just tried and, you know, 
always, you know, kind of looked over her shoulder and we just drew together and it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't stressful. And then, you know, life happens and work and career and all these other amazing talents out there. And then you sort of like, I kind of just like, I reason why my Instagram says design is because I, I decided to just do design work. And um, every once in a while, I would write things by hand. My handwriting was always a part of my work. And, the, and, and maybe I would draw a little bit here and there. So it just, it just was for me, it, it was just my journal. And so all of this that's come out of it and even just sitting here right now with you is, is just like bonus, you know, unexpected. And I'm so happy to inspire people all the time and it's still going and I'm still not bored of it. And I'm still, you know, the stack of sketchbooks has grown and I'm just, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's next, but um, it's, it's nice to be here with you. and. To, the prompt today is is kind of fun, and it's actually taken from my new book, Draw Your World. I was going to so, say, speaking of what's next, you, we all have something to look forward to, which is yeah, that's next, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's right. But I, my part is done. I'm just waiting. So now I'm like, okay, well, what's next? Mm -hmm. um, but at, actually, what's next after Draw Your World is Draw Your Day for Kids. So awesome. I'm ex I'm I'm very excited about that. Super excited about it. As the mother of so, a six-year-old, I'm really excited about that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is so exciting. And the editor on that is just like a rock star in that in the kids' book world, and she's had such a great vision for it. And so it's kind of a mix of draw your world and draw your day, or draw your day and draw your world, um, edit for a young, you know, at a younger a younger level. But I don't, I think it's definitely for adults too. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Well, that's the thing I feel like is, is art is so much about um, play. And I, well, every yeah. time I start to feel like, you know, even a big painting or something I'm working on as a work, I sort of remind myself like, wait, 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 like lighten up around this. Like, what yeah. if I just lighten up and how can this be easy? And like, oh, when when I sort of take away that um, sometimes that serious mindset. It, um, I, I think I, that makes our work better, you know, when we're oh. we're not afraid of it and we're not trying too hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and so many people have said to me, oh, I haven't drawn since I was, you know, for 50 years or something, you know, and they come back to it and draw your day and sort of help them come back to it. And so if we've, if, if some of us have sort of spent all that time away from making art or um, that, that we, we can go to draw your day for kids and just be at that level again. So it, it's, easy to you know it, it's definitely for all ages yeah. <laughs> i think we have um eight to 12 on the they have to have like an age thing on it but it's for any age <laughs> <laughs> oh i love that well i can't wait for draw your world and and i'm really excited now for for draw your kids um sam yeah. and um yeah speaking of play would you want to kind of catch us up a little on on kind of what the past little bit you've been up to and maybe some of the supplies you've been playing with. And, um, you know, I feel like the last time you and I did a live demo was really close to the beginning of this whole crazy period we've all been. Through. Yes, it was. And that was just the beginning of, I don't know, me starting to get more comfortable being online with video and live streaming and you too. And um, it's really fun to get to circle back probably almost a year later now. I think so. And that, and you know, that, that, um, painting that we made is in draw your world oh it was an yeah I'll be yeah I'm gonna go show you one second mm -hmm. yeah yeah I forgot I forgot to tell you that I don't <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to hear that and, um, Elizabeth who bought it remember afterwards I sold I sold it to someone she she and I have become friends too I don't know if she knows that her painting is in Wait, where is it? All right, sorry, one sec. <laughs> I know we, we have to get to playing. Oh, there it is. Can you see it? Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, what was it? It was an orange and a lemon on that beautiful towel building up all yeah, the, um, with the pink with the pink label. Yep, all the texture. Yeah. Oh wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see if what, what I draw today becomes anything else. You never know. You never know. Um, okay, so material things that have, I mean, um, are we, are, 
are we going to, are we, we're talking about tools, right? And yeah. I think I, I want to share some of the things you, you've gotten out today and what you're playing with. And we might have yeah. to talk about this project we've been, we've been scheming. <laughs> I know we, we, we might, do you want to highlight this, this one? Yeah, there we I go. I've got okay. your, your main page featured now. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Let me just, I'm sorry. Can you hear that when I, I mess with my air, air pods? You okay. sound great. Um, well, I have to say since, you sent me this brush. It's one of my favorites. So nice. And this rosemary brush, which you, you sell. And so there's that. I really, I'm still like so loyal to these pens. This has been like my go-to for oh my gosh, so many years now. Mm -hmm. And then a pencil is a pencil. I have a 7B here, which I really like. It's a little soft and buttery and really nice. And then the, my, you know, tried and true black wing pearl it's so cute when it's so short <laughs> i know i really use them that's why i have so i have enough black wing pencils now to re literally last a lifetime so i keep telling myself don't buy more don't <laughs> and this little pocket palette this is from our most of these are from our first collaboration i think it's like the well they're probably mixed up now but i love this for on the go and and I was introduced to Derwent in, Ink Pens Paints and I, some people who follow me and um, have have been like in some of the Michaels classes. I I really just fell in love with those paints too, but they're very different than watercolor in some ways. They're a little bit more like um, gouache. Between it's a mix between like acrylic gouache and gouache and watercolor, and um, and then, you know, Greenleaf and Blueberry paints have just been a favorite for so long now. And this is my collection. They're so amazing. And then there's some of the new ones are like super intense. Mm -hmm. I like I like watercolors that are more intense. I've learned that about myself. Um, and maybe it's just the way my work is. And I don't know, I like this green, look how gorgeous that is. Oh, I love that. Um, That's so deep. Uh huh. Yeah. And the so and the, with those. Uh huh. The yellow, the cyan, and this violet. Oh my gosh, it's so purple. Is I learned from my mother, and then Jess, Jess Greenleaf, of Greenleaf and Blueberry. She they she, um, she confirmed that purple is a hard pigment. There's there's um, a whole thing about it, and I don't know. My my mother was on a hunt for this special purple. In did Brooklyn, she, she did this guy in in uh, it's kind of like this secret in in the in the botanical world and in in the like I feel like maybe maybe I should find out from Jess if she knows him. But this guy is supposedly legend and he mixes his own paints and he's in Brooklyn, but he's really old and I don't even know if he's still alive. We went like three years ago. And my mom was on a hunt for this purple. Um, this one's another. These are, the purples are so beautiful. Mm. Anyway, and then this one I learned, I'm pretty sure this is it. Coat Desert. I think that's the one. Is like a really good color for New York City um, sidewalks. <laughs> There's like a warmth to the sidewalks here, a lot of them. So it's like grayish. Anyway, um, yeah, so I don't know. This is what I have here. And we're going to, I'm going to play with some of the colors. Orange is also a little bit of a hard color. So I have a Daniel Smith orange and green leaf yellow ochre. And, you know, just mi probably mix some red and, and, and yellow to get, to get a good orange because prompt should i talk about the prompt i love that yeah and it's, it's something special from your book yes so one of the prompts and i think it's in the everyday life section is a prompt to just take a walk and look down and look up and look all around and look for something that you like pie that is usually of little interest or that you, you know, a doorknob that you push or 
an electric grate that you step over or, um, you know, the, even, even the garbage can on the corner, you know, things that are just there. I mean, in the city, we have garbage cans on the corner. I know, I don't know if you do in Port Townsend, but, <laughs> um, but you know, at just things that, that are, that you sort of take for granted and find something that inspires you. And you think, well, what would that be like to draw? And take a picture of it and draw it. So I'm trying to find it in the book. Sorry, one sec. <laughs> I, love I should that have had these pages. Finding beauty in the everyday there. Yes, exactly. And it seems to me that that helps you really just delight in your surroundings and that you're always keeping a sharp eye and that beauty doesn't need to be conventional, that just something that sparks your interest and um, having that part of your brain just, just kind of alive. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's, and it's just, these are exercises that take away that pressure of what to draw, mm -hmm. you know, the idea that just look around you and to see, you know, well, that's sort of icky or weird or random, or it's just a doorknob or it's a, uh, you know, wh whatever it might be. And they think, what, what would that be like? How would that feel to draw? This is a New York City electrical cover. Mm. And I, I walk by, I walk over it all the time and I love, I love this drawing, you know? So these are the, these are some of the, the extra the little challenges. There's a lot in here. It's all, it also has an appearance on the back cover. Oh, oh, I love that. So, I mean, we all feel that sometimes that the intimidation of a blank page or a new sketchbook and just having a little prompt or direction to help get started, I think, can be really liberating of it takes away one of those decisions. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. The, the, there's always something to draw. There always is. So, yeah. um, so uh, the, just yesterday I was walking to um, the coffee shop and there was an orange on the ground. And I just was like, why is there an orange there? It must have been because uh, I live uh, just a few blocks away from the uh, local public school. My kids actually went there too. And so there's always these like, you know, parade of families and kids um, in the morning. So somebody must have just dropped it. But <laughs> I just thought it was so kind of, it just caught my eye. It's so bright in this sort of like, uh, palette of just you know grays and and ochre you know just concrete yeah. um color that that I, I find beautiful too that there's some wood here it was kind of like in front of this sort of decrepit like window pane like right right at the ground level I think this goes into like the basement it's like anyway. a little still life of textures and then this whole pop <laughs> I know I know so I thought I'm gonna draw the orange today Fine. So I'm going to just start. Should I just start? Is, or... Yeah, let's. Oh, and I, I thought I see a couple of questions I thought we could answer. Um, so oh, good, uh, the yeah. original Draw Your Day palette that um, Sam and I did a couple years ago is no longer available. But um, Sam, can I share a little bit of the news? Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> yes, we... please. Please do. It's exciting. Everyone yeah. who's here gets to learn. We are uh, working with Jess at Greenleaf to put together a really special palette um that's going to be a full big set of paints and a and a full pocket palette and it's um curated by sam and so y'all here are the first people to hear Yay. about it um it'll be available in june so um our mailing lists are going to be the best spot to hear about that and we can't wait we've been having so much fun uh working together um you know having the, the three of us women and artists and um sort of a, <laughs> get, getting the chance to collaborate is really fun and special. And we just can't wait to share this with you. And Sam, you have chosen just a really fun set of colors too. And I don't know if you might want to feature just like a few of them and then we can, uh, we'll, we'll be able to share more next month. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you can be sure that the colors that I spoke about a little bit earlier, just a few minutes ago, will be in there. And there's a few surprises and there's definitely a purple. <laughs> um, and then Greenleaf makes such a, an, an amazing opaque white, which we had in the last palette, we had a gouache, a white gouache. Um, 
and I, I wasn't sure if we would be able to have something like that, but Jess is the green leaf white is, is wonderful, really great. So there's a white again and lots of colors, lots of really great colors and some with some more granular texture than others and some that are earthy. So you can get, you know, if you're working on like an, a landscape or plein air kind of um, painting and, in um, because that's what the pocket palette is so great for. So just being out outdoors, you'll have all the right colors for that kind of work. Um, then there's, you know, I I always incorporate. Um, sometimes there's metal and like like I was saying a doorknob or even for some fun lettering. There's a few going to be a few metallics, um, and. Yeah, I don't know if I should say everything, but it's so fun. We're we're super excited. Yes. And it's going to kind of look like this, like not all little tiny. A lot of them are going to be full pans, which are, are they use this size. But there's a few that are um, the little half. So it'll be full like this, but not quite as many. So super exciting. Did we just share too much? That's okay, I right? I don't think so. I don't think so. We can't <laughs> wait. We're really excited about it. And um, yeah, and then the other news too that I just shared to our newsletter, um, Sam, I'll just mention this while you get started sketching there, is that um, Sam, you're doing a workshop with us. And yes. it's um, a now available on, on our website, arttoolkit.com. And um it's going to be about draw and sketch your world and and taking things even even deeper than what we're we're going here and building form and exploring uh little collections and building color and and i'm just so excited to to have um to, to get to take a deeper dive into some of your techniques sam and and get a little preview here today yeah um i'm excited too and that one just so everybody knows is um it's a workshop where we're together, you know, people are, I think we're all, are we all going to be on screen? Like, well, yeah, we'll be on and screen. I'll be, yeah. So it's, um, it'll be, it'll be great. Yeah. I might leave this kind of this thing out. I don't know what that is. I think I'm going to leave that out. I love that you're license. starting with pencil. I, uh, yeah. I, I've noticed that with your work is, is you get these really wonderful textures you build up. Yeah, and I always, I'm um, pretty much always leave the pencil. I just paint right over it. I just like, I like those, those layers. It's kind of a record like, too of like everything you're seeing, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and and also it it it's fun to just sort of have that um, when you're looking when you're looking. Oh, I was going to share this. That's right. Let's just see it. This piece that some people might have seen if they look on my Instagram. This piece here was a little bit similar as far as like this concrete, like decay, this weird like um, steel beams, but there was just some some uh, nature green, these leaves just like creeping out, which I love. So I wanted to share this and in, in here, I, I painted afterwards, I mean, sorry, I, I first sketched in pencil and I don't know if you can see, but it's there, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that, but there's, I don't really erase. So it's not, it's not the neatest, my work, but I like that. Here, you can see it in this corner. It's the process, yeah. I love the layers and, and textures, it, it's tangible. Yeah, I, I like that. And, and, um, and then I went, I went in with a little bit of ink just to get some of those details. So, yeah, and that that was painted with green leaf paints and a little bit of gouache to make it a little bit more more opaque. Like, like, but go ahead. I was just gonna say I, I like the approach of this prompt too because you're inviting. The idea of like taking a photograph, kind of going hunting that, you know, you don't need to do everything on site or we may not always have time to work on site and that it's, it's okay to do some of your composing or hunting with a camera and then to, you know, um, 
explore it in your sketchbook when you may have a little more time. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, with my life, the way it is, that's, that's pretty much how, how it goes for me. Um, most of the time it's so rare now that I have, you know, this weekend we're going out to long, uh, long Island where my in-laws house houses and, um, where I might take the time this weekend to just sit and do some, you know, drawing from life, but it's so hard, so hard to have that time with kid with the kids and school and stresses. And, um, so most, most of the work is done, um, at home from, from photos or from memory. Yeah, I find with my um, expeditions, people have asked, oh, does your family come with you? And I say, well, not not usually. I- I'm kind of boring when I go on field expeditions because I-, <laughs> I like to just go and do a lot of drawing. And then when I'm with my family, I'm, I work really quickly. <laughs> it's a skill I feel I've developed. Um, but it's always a treat to be able to take a little slower dive. Um, yeah. I'll-, I'll share a little bit later, but I, for um, your prompt... I um I found some beach stones, so I'm I'm gonna follow your approach with some of my stones here, um, in all these different colors that I hunted over last weekend. Oh, I love that. And I think I think um, we are. Um, th- this I would say that the piece previously that I showed probably took about. I was probably working on that for two hours or so. I spend a little time on that. And so I won't, I, if I do this in that, to that level, I, I, w- I won't be able to finish it. Do you like to but listen to music I, when you work at all, Sam? I do. I actually, lately I've been listening to podcasts and just so many friends and people are, there's so many good ones and everybody's starting a new podcast. <laughs> I've been listening to podcasts more, but I do have music on. When I, re- when I remember, sometimes I'm just sitting, it, whenever I'm writing, I have to have complete silence. I just, no distraction. I can't, I can't concentrate. My brain can't do it. I don't know why. <laughs> Get that full focus. Yeah, just writing is harder for me. It takes like all of my attention. I just see a question from Diane asking if you have a, a color printer, what color printer you use to print your photos? Cause it looks really nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> you should see the first print. I was telling Maria that uh, the printer is finicky right now, but it's been great. It's an Epson. And I got it when I moved into the studio. So it's been, it's been almost three years. So um, I might have to get a new one. I don't, I don't know what it's been very finicky, but, but yeah, the print, the print today looks good. It looks like you're hatching with your pencil and building up texture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to uh, stop with the pencil soon because I kind of have the main, the main idea down. Mm-hmm. I like that you're adding in your shadows with pencil too. And, and I mean, you've already got a lot of depth there through just having your values, kind of your darks and lights distinguished like a yeah. map for yourself. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then it's a, in a, in a way, I always see sometimes when I'm, when I'm painting um, that in a, in a way it's like um, a coloring book, you know? I just realized I forgot water. My water's a little dirty. I was painting earlier. So I'm happy to answer any more questions. As I'm right now, I'm mixing some of this um, Cote d'Azur um, green leaf paint with black. getting like a kind of like a warmer black. Oh, beautiful. You know, it's interesting to me too, in, in going like dis- establishing those shadows first. Um, yeah, I know most people b- b- uh, build up. <laughs> 
You don't always need to follow. <laughs> you can learn rules, but don't necessarily need to follow them. <laughs> yeah, no, I like I'm that. not a big one for rules. Yeah. <laughs> and if there are rules, I don't know them, you know? I talk about that in Draw Your World. Like, you know, I, I, I break all the, all sorts of rules. There are. Seems like it opens you up for some opportunities to learn, especially with some of the mixed media. Do you have a favorite subject or something you've been really gravitating towards lately? I mean, I love seeing some of these kind of found cityscapes that you're, that you're doing. Um, I've been, you know, the, the, huh, that's a good question. I don't really have a favorite thing. I mean, I really just paint what I want to at the moment. And one thing that I, I have been trying to see if, you know, I can sort of open myself up to is like more of a full scene with people. You know, I don't really, I always just focus on one person. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm, 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 that's, that's not answering your question. I mean, my favorite things, my favorite things to draw are animals always. <laughs> I love drawing animals. Um, I love, um, I love drawing my kids. It's a challenge, but I love that. I love, um, love drawing fruit and things that are, are, just about about building those layers, um, just getting that depth and playing with the different parts of the shad the shadows and um, I don't know I don't have a favorite thing I just I, you know sometimes I'll be done something and I'll be like oh I really like that you know and then that and then I'm pleased with myself <laughs> and then other times I'm like oh I really wanted to draw that and I think that that was a you know, a favorite thing. And then I'm like, Oh, I, I didn't like that way that turned out. So it, for me, it changes every day. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. Oh, it's nice. To and I'm not one. I think that's the thing. I'm not somebody who would be like, um, I'm going to be a still life painter. My, my, my aunt was my great aunt. And we have where our apartment is filled with her, her paintings. And they're, they're beautiful. Um, but I always wonder, like, how did she paint the same thing her whole entire career? Uh -huh. You know, that that's just um, not, not, um, I, I want to, I don't know, I like, I like drawing all sorts of things. And do you have a favorite? I mean, do you? Um, no, that's a great question. I, I'm also just, as I'm playing with pencil right now, I'm, I'm kind of musing how much I'm enjoying um, I don't sketch much with pencil and like building up. It's, it's, it's a different tactile experience. Like I'm a real pen person usually with my, my first off and um, I'm really, mm -hmm. into it. Um, yeah, you know, I do have a favorite subject I'd say, and it's just been a passion since I was a little girl and that is um, the sky. And I just have mm -hmm. this memory when I was in like third grade of like making some life goals. <laughs> and I think I was like, well, I want to visit every continent. I wanted to travel and then I was like I, I want to write a children's book which I haven't done yet mm -hmm. I still hope to someday and then I want to paint sky and water well because I always loved like painting and and just sky and water um I would always been fascinated by the clouds and um so that like there's just something to me in getting to build out some of these ephemeral shapes and like just like out of these soft layers that from an artistic standpoint, um, I'm continually fascinated by, um, mm. and, uh, and I, I, I love that it, that, um, just focusing on the, you know, the water and the sky, um, it, it's hard and it takes, <laughs> it can take, it can take a, you know, a lifetime to get to a place where, where you're happy with it. Right. Yeah. And there's also just, you know, that's, that's, that's the thing. There's so many different ways that you can paint the sky, I think, but I don't know. And I mean, if you want to paint a piece of fruit, the way it is, you know, literally the way, it, you know, how it 
how it is in front of you. Um, the sky is always changing, you know? The sky always looks different. So I feel like there is something there that can be explored for, for, through a lifetime. Yeah. As opposed, to, as opposed to a bowl of fruit, you know, unless you mix up your style. I don't know. But, you know, like know. something I think about is in my own life too, just reflecting on like things that used to be hard and now feel easy. And then like challenging myself to be like, and what feels hard now that I want to be easy? And, you know, you're mentioning people, like people have always... Um, you know, in terms of like portraits or faces, um, been something that feels a little, a little more intimidating. And maybe that's someday something I'll, I'll play with more is, is diving more into faces. Cause I definitely, I have sort of my comfort zones. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Used to be hard that feels now easy or anything in that vein you think about? Um, well, drawing people is easier now because I've forced myself to, to, you know, I've just been, I've been really trying to just see it, you know, follow my own advice. I mean, drawing people is just like drawing anything else. We're just made up of, of relative shapes, really, you know, it's just, there's something intimidating about, you know, about drawing humans that I, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to explain. And it's hard to really understand why I think we just have such like a, hang up about it. Um, but I think it's because we want people to look like them or, um, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of detail in a person, res, you know, as opposed to, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Cause like, if you like think about like, okay, I, I drew the boots by the door the other day, right? There's a lot of detail in there. Yeah. That was hard. That was a challenge, but it, it was a different kind of challenge. It was so much easier than drawing my husband. You know, I drew his shoes. <laughs> so it's hard to know like really what it is about it that makes it, that gives us such, you know, fear. I think it's that we me. know faces or people so well, like, you know, our eyes are just so tuned into proportion and, you know, mm -hmm. that, um, where a tree or shoes or a mountain. <laughs> A little easier to um well it's more forgiving too because if you're off i mean i'm not accurate here you know it's i mean it's pretty close to the photo when now i'm looking it's pretty close yeah i mean but i'm 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 you know good at like following shapes um but you know then it's the same thing when i drew all the little portraits in that tiny little book i don't know if you know what i'm talking about but i challenged myself and did all these little mini portraits and I did them in black and white so I didn't have to sort of worry about skin tone and all of that on top of getting likeness you know getting the, the likeness of the person uh -huh. um but I just you know I, I had like just calm myself down and was like you know what this is the same as anything else it's just relative shapes just like this this scene is right now you know which you saw was like pretty easy for me to just draw yeah shapes oh. down to those elements sam i see a it's, question I, i'm fairly certain you have the r13 rosemary brush i think that's the one i said mm. um and uh that's that's one we really enjoy I'm, I'm actually using it right now too it's um a sable synthetic blend so it's got this really long like sharp point and then um am i right sam Mine's the 10. Oh, yours is the 10. Oh, that's it. That's also a fantastic one. That is a full synthetic round number eight. And um, yeah, it's snappy. You get like a nice point. And mm -hmm. um, I just love all these rosemary brushes. I'm they're They're so cute too, when they're all folded up. <laughs> they are. Did everybody see? They like, I my brush is wet now, but see, it has like a tap and then you just throw it in your bag. Such a, it's so good. This is, this is, definitely the best little version of it because da Vinci makes them and um et, what's the word what's the one that starts with an e a Skoda. Um, yeah. yes there's other brands but this these are these are definitely my favorite nice to get to know a tool um i see a question too about um 
the Cote d'Azur in black and mm -hmm. um, wondering, let's see here, what are the two light colors in the palette closest to the painting? Let's see here. Um, I think that's from Christine. And Christine, are you, I'm not sure if you're talking about the... Um, These? Let's see. In the this green is just palette. a mixing palette. So this is nothing. This I have some black squeezed on here. It's, I think, Daniel Smith, but I think she is probably talking about maybe these. Not sure. Christine, if you're if you're still with us and want to post a couple more specifics there, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, and oh my goodness, Sam, that is just coming together as you're delineating the the shapes and the, the big areas. And can you hold up the orange a little so or your picture so we can see some of the kind yeah. of thing you're doing? Because that texture is really coming through. Oh, I love it. And that little bright bit you left on the orange too. It just gives it some dimension and sparkle. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'll, I'll definitely be building more, but um, it's, it's coming along. It's funny how you, I think, I feel like that happened last time we were painting where you, where you were said something like, maybe it was the same thing. Maybe I went right into the shadows, but um, it's funny. It's funny when I learn Whenever I'm painting with people who seem to be like super pros, um, I um, I'll, I'll be like, oh, really? I'm supposed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're too modest, Sam. I uh... <laughs> well, I just I, 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 I'm self-taught really with with a lot of things. I mean, I I went to a fine art school, but I did not learn how to watercolor. Nobody yeah. taught me. Yeah. Um, nobody taught me. I don't think I ever used my watercolors. I, and I had like a Windsor Newton set. I remember that I loved because everything like was so compact and folded in and it had like a little water cup. And I remember my mother bought it for me and I, I wanted it so badly and I just never used it. So I'm complete, complete, completely self-taught with this, this stuff. Um, so I don't, I don't really know if there are rules, you know, I just, I've learned, I've learned that I don't follow a lot of the rules, but it works for me, so. Yeah, with watercolor too, I found in, like in college, I did some oil painting, but, um, you know, watercolor didn't have as much of a formal place and, um, but it's got such a history and I, you know, as a, as a medium for expressing ourselves, just being so portable. And uh, I do love, I mean, I'm really inspired by, yeah, just the, the tradition of, of being able to go out with plain air and, and sketch and mm -hmm. your paints with you. Bring yeah, it's so, it's really, it's really so nice. Um, there, there are, I, I joined, um, I was invited to the New York Botanical Gardens two years. I, and the, the third year was, you know, got derailed from COVID. But for two years, I went to the New York uh, Botanical Gardens with these, with all of these artists who are plein air artists, and I was completely out of place. And then when we all showed our work at the end, it started by an, uh, somebody uh, named James Gurney. I don't oh, know if James you know him. Gurney. Oh my goodness, I'm reading his books right now to my daughter, Dinotopia, and uh, yeah, 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 James. He's anyway, awesome, and yeah. he he's super nice. So he invited me, and. Um, and at the end, we were sharing our work. And I mean, I stuck out, st stood out like a sore thumb in a good way, I think. It's nice to have, and I'm, I was so, it was so nice that he invited me. Um, but everyone says he's really traditional, masterful plein air artists, right? Um, and I remember at the end, he was, we're talking about these buildings that I did. I did a whole series of buildings and, um, and, uh, you know, I was talking about how, and I talk about these, this project in Draw Your World, um, how I was, um, I, I sketched on the spot, but then I took a photo and then I finished it back in my studio. And I just said, this is it. I mean, I'm not, I think he was fine with it, but he's like, oh, you know, <laughs> it was like, it was this moment <laughs> like, okay, I clearly broke a rule because <laughs> I didn't like park myself in front of the building on like second avenue in New York city. And 
and draw it. Not he would, I'm not saying this anything against him at all. It was just um a funny thing where I I, I was like, uh yeah, no, I I just um did a quick pencil sketch and then finished it in my studio. And he loved them. I mean, it was fine. But there have been times where I'm like clearly breaking some rules. Oh, I say embrace it. <laughs> I know. No, it's good. Um, I see a couple of uh, questions. Um, and oh my goodness. Well, maybe we'll, we'll hang out for a, um, a few more minutes. And we're... Are we already at like an hour? That's the thing. We're, it we're just about... goes so fast. I know I am. I'll have to share this shortly. I'm just having so much fun here with these, these rocks and following some of your approach. Um, I see a great question from Kim and Joe saying, um, I usually avoid using black as it tends to kill the color. Could you talk mm. about your experience with this and, and maybe kind of how you how you use black or, or help it um, avoid, I guess, maybe killing muddying colors. Um, and then someone is mm. also curious what sketchbook you're working in right now. Oh, yeah. Um, I know that I do, I do, I do remember that. I remember in art school when I was learning oil painting that there's a whole, there is also a thing about black and, you know, building colors because there really is no black. Like, well, there might be in the concrete here, but in this orange, there is no black, right? There's, there's no black. It's just a reflection of the, the gr gravel here, whatever you want to call it, the stone here. Um, that's making that look really dark. So in this orange, I would make an effort not to use black for sure. Um, so, but you know, when, when I'm working with, with shadow, I always add a shadow pretty much under everything. I use, this is my favorite. And this is, there's gonna be a big pan of this in, in the palette that we're making. This called slate. It is like the best, the best light gray for shadows. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I think I do use black a lot. It comes into play. Like when I'm, I wonder, like if I flip through this, I'm sort of thinking, I mean, there, there's probably some black in these trees and there's definitely black on these pages. So I kind of use it when it makes sense, you know? too that there's different there's black in this one. Oh, look at that oh my goodness that is so sweet what a wonderful monochrome almost yeah exactly and i definitely use black there i mean the black in, in the kitty's eyes i use it when it, it but here on these boots these are the boots i was talking about there's there's some black in there and it seems like with yeah. that black, you're you're really pushing your values, and so by having those deep darks, it's helping everything else pop. So you're not muddying; you're using it really discerning. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm 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 trying to use it where it is, you know, where it really is. I don't know. I don't know if that. I, I this happens to me all the time, and I'm sorry if people who are listening or watching, where I'm like, I don't know if I'm answering your question. Um, but yeah, there is black in places and that's when I try and use it because it does muddy up color and it, it, it will destroy the color, you know? Um, yeah, in my experience, so, I've got kind of a rule of thumb that I don't always follow, but it's like, I don't um, mix more than like three colors together usually because that can get kind of muddy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I find that there's some different approaches to palettes and maybe this will resonate with you, Sam. There's palettes or selections of colors that are really designed for like mixing when you really want to get into the whole mixing world. And actually speaking of Greenleaf and Blueberry, I've been using one of these mm -hmm. today, which is um, their CMYK palette where we just have four colors. Yes. And so part of the joy for me of using this little palette is discovering how to mix things. And it has a, a black as well to help with that value kind of toning things down or, or um, making things a little more earthy. Um, and then there's palettes and which are, I think, um, there's less focus on mixing and more colors. So then you've got sort of the speed and flexibility and, you know, can get what paint you need and put it on your paper um, and more direct watercolor approach. Um, and I think both are both are great. It's figuring out what resonates with you. <laughs> 
I don't know. If that yeah, happened. definitely. I, but we, we, we did discuss this when the three of us, when we were working was on the, on the palette is you, you kind of, you want somewhat of a limited palette. I mean, I've got so many little neutral colors here that I, and I don't even know. Sometimes it's, it's too many options. And so it's, it's, it's better to, to work with a, a smaller palette and mix those colors and, and to get the tones that you want, I think. And, and it, it seems to be for me like more, more gratifying. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. There's, there isn't, there is never the like perfect color, right? So you, you, but do you have I mean, a, unless you, <laughs> do I have a favorite color? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, I would say I really love to ju just, to just, I mean, it, it's interesting because we were talking about black and white, but I love doing those portraits in just, in just black and white. Uh -huh. I love that. And that I can actually, do I have that little, I had a little box and it was just this, this slate, I think graphite and a black because green leaf makes really great black. One of them is lamp black, which is like black, black, black. And, um, and then the white, that was it. So it's nice to have a limited palette. I think yeah. for you me, it's some freedom there, less decisions to make. Less decisions, absolutely. Yeah. And we have made for sure that this palette is like, you, is everything you need. I mean, you do, there's some fun stuff. There's the basics, there's earth tones, there's st tones, there's um, three colors that I'm gonna have to experiment with more, but Jess was showing us how gives like the full range of skin tones. That and that's a mixture of I think it was three colors. I'm gonna have to like be able to speak about all this. <laughs> I can't remember them right now. I'm gonna have to break put it to memory. It's still in production um, right now, so we haven't had them all in one spot to play with. Can't yeah, exactly. To, uh, can't wait to start taking it into the field to play. Oh, um, me too. Yeah, yeah. Well, for me out out in the world, I like calling it field. I like that. Maybe I'll maybe I'll start to say out out in the field. Yeah, the field can be, the field can be your backyard. <laughs> it can, right? It can be, yeah. A, yeah. Um, well, I I don't know how long much longer you want to go. I mean, I'm gonna there's, I'm just gonna show people there's um, a little bit of like reflective light highlight, and the white, the green leaf white is so yeah. great. Yeah, that's um, great. You want to put on a couple highlights and then we'll... we'll yeah, go. I mean, this right here is the white of the paper. So I'll probably leave that. I mean, I will leave that. But then there's this will like add some of those like little, the texture, the little the skin of the orange. Will you hold that up after you've applied mm -hmm. the white so we can see it up close? Yep. And I see a couple questions about when our palette will be available. And I'm just going to say... Um, around the end of June and to stay tuned to our mailing list. So, um, and I'll, I'll make sure in the um, description in this video, I think we've got Sam's um, website already. So you sign up for her mailing list and then at Art Toolkit, that's really the best place to hear about it first. It will be a limited edition. Um, and uh, yeah, can't wait. Oh, and look at that, yeah, that little color. There might be a, a, a race for them. I'm, I have a feeling. I'm a there, there's, um, can't, I can't remember how many you're making and, or how, what, whatever, but the, the limit edition is so stressful, isn't it? Oh, well, it's, we sell out. Maybe we'll have to do one more little run. Like, <laughs> I know, I know. We'll have to see, we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah. But I've been there and it's so stressful. So the best, definitely the best way is mailing list because we can't, we can't rely on the algorithm anymore. I mean, it just, you never know who's seen what. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I added some texture. I'm going to keep going with it, but if you mm. like just building up, um, there's going to probably be like another layer of just orange to sort of soften all of that texture. 
Oh, do that. I'll do that. Just the shapes in that. When I just squint and look at it, you've just got these basic rectangles, simple tones, and then this sphere of the orange and then it, it's come together for a really sweet composition Th thank you for breaking that down and and i love that that was something that caught your eye out in the world yeah i think it's, it's so random just an orange on the concrete i love that though yeah yeah all right so i just softened that up a little bit i'm going to keep going but if you can see see how it softened a little bit i'll just keep going so if you um Post the final, uh, tag us and we can um, share it and, and link to it in the, this video description also. Um, Absolutely, and, yeah. And Sam, maybe I'll jump to our faces. We can just say goodbye and thank you. Then. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I'm like, I, I, get, I get so into it. I'm going to keep going, but um, I'll take a break. Okay. I, I want to just give you a little peek at what you inspired me to work on too. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me. Oh wow. <laughs> I, I feel like I want to dig up. I can't tell which ones are the real rocks and which ones are your paintings. <laughs> Here, let me spotlight it. Um, yeah, yeah. It, we we um we on our beach. I was just really captivated by all the different colors, and yes. Um, and I'm actually this is kind of a sneak peek of exhibitionary art. I'm working on. A giant painting. Sam, can I just show you the study for this? Yes. Um, please. So this is just a little like a five by five study I did of these. Oh wow. It's so similar in a way. Um yes, yeah, so I've been thinking about rocks and texture. Um, but then the, the big one's gonna be like 40 inches wide. So the eggs are like almost a foot tall. And I'm a little nervous oh, wow. just going for it. So you've inspired I me to think about building these these textures and layers. Um, nice. <laughs> I love it. It's so and it's so cool to see you move them around because you really can't tell which ones are real and which ones are. <laughs> I love that. Oh, uh, it's like an off. It's like one of those like cool, you know, Instagram things where you like, I, I don't know, where you think that it's sitting there and then you pick it up and vice versa. Um, <laughs> so cool. So sweet. Um, well, I, I just really, let me pull my, my face up here. I really want to thank you for, um, for jumping on with us this afternoon, Sam, and spending this time. And um, I'm just always inspired by our conversations. And I'm, I'm so excited about um, upcoming workshop with us and our palette. And thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm super excited about all of it, especially the palette. But just working together is really fun. Um, yeah, I, I feel like this palette is going to be like the, I don't know. Anyway, it's going to be awesome. Um, but yeah, so sign up for our mailing list so that you can get get one. <laughs> and um, everyone, thank you for joining us. And oh my goodness, Sam, I see one last question. Maybe we didn't quite get to that. I just want to um, um, I'll throw out there. Can you tell us what kind of sketchbook you were using for your demo? Oh, that's right. I make them now. Oh, so so cool. it's arches, it's arches watercolor paper, 90 pound in the hot press. And yeah, it's like, it's totally handmade. You can tell it is not store bought. So you can't buy them, but I do really recommend there's, um, Peg and All makes a sketchbook that's great. It's got drawing paper in it. Um, but the drawing paper is really wonderful and you can paint on it. It's called the Aura sketchbook and it's the same size. And we actually were like in collaborations or I, we thought of collaborating, but it, it, the watercolor paper, it got like, it just got messed up. So it just got too expensive. So they sell a beautiful sketchbook that really looks just like this. Um, and then I also recommend, I know people love Stillman and Byrne. Um, Beautiful. Handbook journals are wonderful. Handbook journals. Um, and and then moleskin watercolor uh, sketchbooks are really wonderful too. So for me, I just, I like, I'm stuck on a specific size, which is actually the same size as Draw Your Day. And it just, it just doesn't exist. And I, I don't really want something heavy that's hard, hard bound. I like soft. So I just started making them by myself and maybe someday somebody will make it for me and you can all buy it. It's been like probably 
three years I've been on and off talking to people and it just, it just doesn't seem to, I, I don't know why it's just like one of those things is hard to do. So. Oh my goodness. Um, I think you should do a, a little post sometime about how you put those together or the dimensions. I see so many questions and people are, are interested. So I think we'll have to leave okay. it here for um, another day. <laughs> I have to make two. I, I, I will I will be making another one because I, I don't have too many pages left and I have to make two. One is a prototype for possibly somebody making them. I can't talk about it yet, but and it probably won't happen. I have no hopes. But let's see. You never know. Hopefully something happens someday. And um, but so I thought I would do it live on Instagram. But if you do go to my Instagram TV, I did do one live where I talked through it and I showed some of the materials that I used and I like folded the paper and sort of showed most of the process. And then another one where i made little tiny ones. So you can find that on my Instagram TV. Oh, so wonderful. Well, um, everyone, thank you for joining us, Sam. Thank you again and have a thank wonderful you. rest of your day and wonderful weekend. Yeah, everyone have a great weekend. Thank you. I don't, I can't see any of the chat or who was here because when I had it on, you could hear it. <laughs> well, well I'll, I'll be sure to get, to get that your way. So we'll, we'll make sure you can. Okay, it. good. So I'd love to see the questions. So thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. All right.